Hey everybody, welcome to another vlog. I think it's number seven from Tater Cowgirl Senior, <laughs> which is me. Um, there's a lot to talk about. I haven't vlogged for a while because I wanted to get a few things together and little did I know what so many things happened. So this is gonna be a, a longer vlog. <laughs> First, I wanna talk about my two bass guitars. You saw shorts on my um, uh, on my channel where I showed you what I'm playing, um, and I sh also showed you that I had to send in Lady Ibanez to Sweetwater for a warranty uh, replacement. The jack over here was wobbly, and the guitar went in and out, so they replaced it. <laughs> send it back with a bag of candy yes they don't know i'm a diabetic <laughs> you know they lock all the candy away at home from me I, I i'm not supposed to eat candy and i love candy so i'm trying to keep clean off it but that bag of candy from sweetwater i kept <laughs> my 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 uh, husband puts all the candy in the gun safe <laughs> that i can't get it Anyway, um, not, I don't want to talk about candy. I've actually got my lab test for the best since 2012, so I'm really doing really good right now, ever since my Daniel fast. <clears throat> what I want to talk about is my two guitars. So uh, the advantages and disadvantages, because I got uh, questions from friends and um, per email of, would you would you recommend to buy a cheaper bass guitar like that Donner? Um, and I would say yes. I show you the differences I noticed just from my in my opinion. I bought that Donner because I wanted to pick up bass guitar again, and I wasn't sure if I would stick with it, if I can do it. So I didn't want to sink too much money into a bass guitar. This one, maybe I can lift it up a little this one it looks like a fender kind of you know uh it came for yeah slightly under 200 dollars and it had a gig bag with it and the allen wrench and a free online class for bass guitar which uh, is in chinese language <laughs> so it didn't help uh, I don't know, but the, the bass guitar itself, um, I'm telling you what I noticed. Uh, the, my plucking hand loves the Donner, prefers the Donner, because the strings are farther apart and uh, you're not mixing up the strings as easily. Uh, my fret hand uh, loves my Ibanez because the the neck is smaller so you are easy it's easier to to um fret and you don't have to move the hands at the donor i have a little problems you know i have to micro shift more than i have to here um so both the left hand likes the ibanez the right hand likes the donor and when i switched from the donor back to the ibanez when she came home uh I missed, uh, I mixed up the, the open strings, like the A and the D string mainly. So that was annoying. So it this, this lasted about um, a week before I got used to the Ibanez again. The, the vice versa, it didn't happen. So when I switched from the Ibanez to the Donner, nothing uh, like that happens because that's actually easier for the plucking hand to find your open strings. The other difference I noticed, um, the Ibanez, my one is about nine pounds. The Donner is 12 pounds. And yes, you notice notice uh, the three pounds more on your neck. I, I do. So it's heavier, that one is heavier. If you stand and play and practice for quite a while, you notice that, ooh, ah, uh, you know, it's heavier. So that is a little bit easier on me. Um, the sound, 
they both have sound good i cannot complain about the donor the donor doesn't have a preamp like the ibanez like here it's a preamp but uh i usually play passive at home so that didn't bother me much and uh i actually have an amp from the honor which is really good and uh you can change stuff around you have more travel less travel clean or you know they have less lots of stuff to where you can um, mix your own sound the ibanez i think um is more versatile uh, i like this dark bass sound the, the the they call it i think they call it vintage sound not so much treble uh not so much uh fuzz and stuff i like the the dark clean bass sound and then the boom 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 and that one i got i get that really good here that one is a little bit harder this they call it i think um i don't know it's not bad it's a good sound but i prefer the dark ibanez sound um strings here were very cheap on the donor i would change if you buy that uh, bass guitar no nope, oops scruffy don't <laughs> um i would suggest to buy better strings on it those strings made dents in my finger and they are really hard to to play uh Make sure they're not too high. The the Ibanez I had custom set up with medium high strings and, and good quality strings, so they are not hurting my fingers. And I know notice I can slide better. Um, it's just a better quality, but that's that is up to you. You know, the, I if you start a bass guitar, you want to try it out. You don't want to spend too much money. The Donner is a good bass guitar for you and it's my backup guitar i already needed it you know when i sent the ibanez in so that's about that uh what else can i tell you oh um i will uh in the end of this vlog i will put the full version of the hallelujah i did the bass cover for it's alexandra burke's version uh, which has two parts the first part is played in f major and right after the ritardando which means you get a little uh, less less volume it goes up loud again and it switches to g major so there's a little snafu in there you have to be really careful about not to play for example, in F major, you play the B uh, flat and in the G major part, you play the B. So you have to be careful not to play the wrong notes, especially me, because I have uh, my, my, my mind is wandering off during practice and that's not good. I have to really um, stay with the song, with the timing, with the groove. And that's concentration stuff I have to really uh, get my act together with. And I get better in it, so <laughs> it's, get, it's getting better. Um, so I play you that one. You have the short version already on the on my shorts, the one with, where I have the angel wings, the one I put on Instagram on Mother's Day. So you can watch that. Um, I think I also put on the fortunate son for you in a different video because i never showed you how i played it i showed you how i played the count out but never the actual song because my my husband blew the quiz <laughs> gave the answer what song i play when i did the count out and because he wanted to get the free coffee from me i, I said whoever gives the first answer gets a free starbucks gift card and uh, he answered you know unbelievable anyway um i would have given the second one if, I, if a second one would have answered i would have given that person the starbucks card of course not not my husband but this way he got one out of me he cheated it one out of me um so what else speaking mother's day um 
I did not do the usual Mother's Day stuff. My stepmother passed away in July and to be honest, I was not, uh, <clears throat> I was not up for, let me get that guitar off for a while. I was not up for Mother's Day this year very much. I'm still missing her, you know. Yeah, she was 85. Yes, it was better for her not to go through more cancer stuff and um i'm still missing her still um she's with jesus but we are missing her down here on the earth and so mother's day this year the first one without her i didn't feel like doing much my daughter had to work night shift so she couldn't do anything and um so my my husband said well he found something and if i don't mind on mother's day doing it we can surprise eddie eddie had saved up about four thousand dollars to buy a car you know she has the driver's license now and she wanted a car and since two years she's collecting all the recycling from the neighborhood in my backyard she didn't tell me, you know, that she told everybody, just throw your stuff over the fence in, in our backyard and I will, I will take it to recycling. And she gets the money for it, of course. Well, when I was sitting in my big yard, uh, ex uh, enjoying the flowers, I see people throwing stuff over my fence and I like, hey. And then Eddie told me, yeah, I told them to do it. Okay, maybe you should tell me. Anyway. So she saved up six, four thousand dollars in two years, and we all know for four thousand here in California, you you're not getting a good car. You're getting a death trap, cheap, which will have um, lots of repairs coming up, and you know. And uh, Clay said, I don't want her to have a car like that. I want, I want her to have a safe car. She can enjoy a few years, you know. So he looked around um, and he found one in the sticks <laughs> from in Pleasanton uh, uh, at a dealership for, I'm not saying the price now, but it was really, really a uh, good price. Low mileage, uh, old guy took care of that car and it, it looked like new, you know. Um, so we said we will surprise her. And on Mother's Day, he said, oh, we do a little country drive for Mother's Day. And she rolled her eyes. Of course, she doesn't really like country drives with slow drives. On the... <laughs> but she, she went, it was Mother's Day. So we went to Pleasanton, to that dealership. And uh, her eyes got really big. She said, why are we at the dealership? She said, because we're looking at a, a car for you. We have an appointment. And she like, <gasps> She beamed, you know, <clears throat> and uh, the big kahuna forked out the rest of the money she needed to buy that car and we bought it. So she drove home with her new Lexus. It's a 2012 Lexus, I think. And a uh, really good deal, really good deal. And uh, she was happy as a clam. And uh, Clay drove with her and I drove the Volt home our uh, second car i drive a cheap clay usually drives the volt to work the hybrid and um so i drove the volt home but i stopped at um at the outlets because it was mother's day after all so i thought hmm so if i don't get anything else maybe i go a little shopping trip and clay actually approved he was on a huge guilt trip because um he turned the mother's day into a car shopping day <laughs> <laughs> so I used that guilt trip, I admit, and I went to the outlets and I got this Sambas, Adidas Sambas, with red stripes, I always wanted red stripes Sambas, and there's a trick, um, ladies. Ladies uh, sambas are about 50 bucks more expensive than men sambas. I don't know why I think it's not fair. So I went to the men section. They have exactly the same sambas in the ladies section and in the men section. 
I went to the men's section, my lady size is eight and a half, and I knew when I subtract one and a half sizes, US sizes, which uh, ends up being seven men size, uh, I, I, can, I can wear it. And I tried it and it fits perfect. So I bought these uh, men version, <laughs> instead of the female version, saved 50 bucks. And uh, so with all sambas you can do that. If, of course, if you want the, the girly versions with little uh, unicorn laces or whatever, they don't have that in the men section. But if you want those, you know, you get those easily. That trick works for all Adidas shoes, I think. Um, so I got those, but had money saved. So I went to Nordstrom Rack that opened newly, newly opened Nordstrom Rack in Gilroy. And I found some nice stuff there. Um, actually not expensive and I was surprised. Good quality stuff. So I got, I'm, I'm really into linen this summer and this gauze material. So I got that skirt. Really pretty. It was down price to 30 bucks. Look at that, it's lined. So you won't have a see-through. That's the other issue I have with white linens <laughs> that you always see the underwear and I can't stand that. So it's lined. I bought that one. Let me turn the, let me see it better. Yeah, really cute. I bought a, a gauze shirt. Very cute. Um, this was down priced. I haven't worn it yet. To 25. 30, 30, 3, what? To 30% savings. Down to 25. Really good quality. Uh, has this little eyelets in there. Can you see that? It's like a cream colored shirt. I, I I wear that over summer, like my body con dress or tank tops underneath or a, a, a body suit, you know. That's good for singing in church or, you know, stuff where you, where you want to look a little bit covered, modest. And let me show you the other stuff. Oops, I got that sweater with like three quarter length arms with all these holes. And you put a bodysuit like that, the cream colored underneath or or uh, um, your even your bathing suit when you go or a tank top, it looks really cool to the, I have that to a green wide legged uh, linen pant, like a, um, a cargo pant, the same green, it looks perfect already wore it a couple times and everybody gave me compliments on it then uh, the other thing i got was that dress linen dress also lined so not see-through it has a, a belt but i think i wear a brown raffia belt with it so i haven't worn it yet this was uh, 40 bucks, not bad, I think. And I couldn't resist Jimi Hendrix, of course. I found the Jimi Hendrix shirt for $9 at the uh, Nordstrom Rack. Authentic Hendrix shirt, lucky brand. And uh, those who know me, I have uh, like a million concert shirts and <laughs> band shirts from bands I like, especially the Ramones and the uh, punk bands, but rock bands too. Deep Purple, I have one from the concert. I have Country, I have Toby Keith, Jason Aldean and uh, Blondie I have and the Beatles, uh, Pink Floyd, uh, Janis Joplin. <laughs> I have tons of them, but I really wear them. So I'm, they are not just hanging in the, and this Jimi Hendrix was still missing. I still look for a good Bob Marley shirt. I don't like the one with the plastic print on it. I want something that has no plastic on it. So I, ha I keep looking. The other thing I got, whoops 
was that pants, also linen. See, I mean, so linen. Uh, but it has some viscosity because it's not crinkling that much. That's why there's a big wide leg and like a big uh, seam high riser. And I wear it with like stuff like that. Something more body formed, you know, because the, the, the pants is already wide, but it's a really cool pants. Not hot when I go to inform choices volunteer. It's usually warm in there because they need to keep it warmer in the ultrasound room. So the building is kind of warm when you actively work, you know, and climb up a ladder and, and sort clothes or clean out. And you really start sweating. So I already always try to wear something light in there. Yeah, that's my my bounty <laughs> from Mother's Day. And uh, uh, Clay was cool with it. So he was a good sports. And what else can I tell you? Yeah, let's, let's stay with informed choices. So that's my calling. I already told you guys um, that there is a story. And uh, I think I told it once on the internet. Um, I'm not doing it right now today. This is for another day, but uh, I like uh, volunteering there. And uh, I know I'm speaking Spanish, so they have not a lot of Spanish speaking volunteers. So it's kind of cool. I do more shifts than I wanted to do, but I love being there. So I, I love uh, being of help for distressed pregnant women, give them more choices than just the one. They get uh, other, other somewhere else. And um, I get to go into the ultrasound and it's just every time I, I'm in an ultrasound, I come out and I have tears in my eyes. It's um, for me, it's always great to see when women decide to keep their babies, even if it's uh, even if, even if it's a hardship for them. We help them as much as we can. We have multiple alternatives to abortion. We can explain to them and we also have uh, if if a woman has decided to have an abortion we still have a counseling class uh, a self-help class for women with ptsd after they had an abortion and uh, we are not we love those women they can come as well as everybody else so we take care of women and um, Hope we do a good job and during that we save lives i think so i'm not speaking for informed choices here it's just my opinion uh the first saturday when i was in there we had um yeah three ultrasounds where the, the young women decided to keep their babies and uh it occurred to me when the nurse, when we went home and the nurse said, Hey, Sylvia, you saved some lives today. Are you, are you aware of that? And I, well, yeah, I, I wasn't aware of the impact, but yes, it's true. You know, we saved some lives and it's there are dark hours when we can't save the life. But, um, I think it's necessary to to volunteer on places like that to help women and not leave them alone you know people judge them oh they don't want an abortion but nobody uh, wants to help no woman chooses an abortion if she's not in a in some kind of an emergency situation some kind of where she can't find another way out and when she when they come to us we show them all the alternatives that are out there you know, and then she can take an informed decision and not just being pushed in one way by the fathers, by the parents and whoever else, you know? Yeah, so that leaves me less time to volunteer at the drama department. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I was willing to hold an office in their booster club, but it's just too much. It's with the bass guitar practice, with uh, church stuff involved and um, 
that um, and and form choices. I think my my cup is full right now. I I don't want to get into a stress situation, which is unhealthy for me with my diabetes, because uh, it's not just food. It's stress too that raises my blood sugar. So. I told them I cannot hold an office. That doesn't mean I'm not volunteering if they need parents volunteering, but I do not want to hold an office in the in the booster club. I made that decision and I explained it to them. Uh, so, you know about the car, Nordstrom, you know about informed choices, <laughs> my guitars, Ibanez versus uh, the donor. And what else is there to tell you? Oh, I take a class in eschatology. Did I tell you that? It's at South Valley Church and uh, very interesting. I didn't know we have a final. Pfft. Next next Monday is the final. I didn't know we have actually an exam. So they put a little damper on it. But uh, I was there every class. I read the homework. I did the homework. So I shouldn't have a problem passing that final. Very interesting class. Can only recommend it um, if you, you like me, uh, are afraid of the end times. Um, I always think uh, getting information helps taking away the fear. And, um, you know, the information based on the Bible and different views of the end times really helped me to to uh, not being afraid of what comes, what will come. And uh, being born again, I shouldn't be afraid, but you know, I know people who are not born again and I'm afraid for them, you know, what happens to them. So anyway, the class helped giving information, shedding light, what is said and not everything you see in the movies or in these uh, end time spectacular, um, you know, media, social media posts or yeah, movies too is true. Um, apocalypse doesn't mean the end of times. Apocalypse just means to to put the curtain back to let us see what we can't see right now. To, you know, in uh, there are different things. I didn't understand and uh, those movies, um, they don't portray it correctly all the time. Most of the time they don't portray it correctly. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. I hope you had fun with uh, this vlog. I think it's number seven and I wish you all, I hope, uh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. Oh yeah, that's, we have to talk about that. So I told you Mother's Day wasn't too fun for me this year, so I didn't want to do anything. Well, I have a friend who is dealing with that every year. She is a little bit younger than me, not much, but she still deals with it. She can't have babies, okay? And uh, she had a, a hysterectomy when she was very, very young. And uh, before she had the hysterectomy, she was accompanying her husband on his international travels because he was in international business and scared, not, not, not at home a lot. So she accompanied him and saw the whole world, you know, so there wasn't really, um, there wasn't really a room for having a baby at that time. They didn't plan on one at that time. Later, she had an hysterectomy because of cancer. And uh, she was also at that age where adopting, uh, yeah, she was, when she had the uh, hysterectomy, the, yeah, she was in the menopause area at that point. Yeah, just started. So, um, she didn't, they, did, they decided not to adopt. They thought we, had, we have a good life. We are a good couple together, a good team together. You can be happy without kids, you know, no question. But with the years, every year she, Mother's Day is the most difficult day for her in the year. The Safeways guy, everybody says, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. And 
she just uh, is suffering from that, you know. And I talked to her husband. She said, I, I always want to do something extra for her, go out with her. And she's not really up to it. And then, you know, I told him, let her grieve on Mother's Day. I grieved, I grieved on this Mother's Day because my, my stepmother passed away last July. And she grieves every year on Mother's Day. So give her that time, that room, that respect to let her grieve. Don't ask her out on a, on a date night or something because then she just feels guilty to refuse it because you wanted to do something nice for her and she is refusing it. So don't do that to her either. Be nice to her. Make sure she knows I love you. I'm here if you need me. Let me know if you want to talk. But I understand you, you, you want to have your day to grieve. To grieve the baby that has never been created. And that's a good, good uh, start, you know. So we had a good um, talk. And I hugged her and I told her I'm here for you too. You, you have to go out and ask for help if you want to talk to people. If you want to be alone and grieve, do that. But make sure you know there are people around you who love you and who are more than ready to, to talk to you and be with you on that difficult, difficult day. So I, I wanted to bring this up because I think there are more people out there who have that, that issue or grieving something and don't want to uh just pretend everything is hunky dory and go on with their life so i had that moment this year and i know many others did too so, so a shout out to all of you i know uh we can muddle through that and uh, with grieving and now i wish you a wonderful uh weekend rest of the weekend it's saturday here right now and I put some pictures in from Eddie's ride, <laughs> which she's very happy about. She goes, drives to school now every day. And I put the full version of Hallelujah, my base cover on it. And uh, what else did I want to put on? I think that's it, huh? Yeah, I put that on in, in, uh, right after I stopped talking to you. As to say in California, peace out. Pow.